This video is sponsored by Brilliant. ChatGPT's code interpreter was just released. This plugin allows us to upload data, write and execute Python code, do data analysis, generate reports, and even download the code and reports generated in seconds. This is like having a junior data analyst that will do all of our work 24-7. And in this video, I'll show you everything we can do with the ChatGPT code interpreter. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we have to do is enable code interpreter. So we open the sidebar and then click on the three dots. Then we select settings and we have to go to beta features. And here we have to enable code interpreter. So we enable this option and we'll be able to work with a code interpreter. Okay, now I'm gonna close this window and then what we have to do is select GPT-4 and you should see in the drop down code interpreter. So we select code interpreter and after that you should see a plus button in the chat bar. So that plus button is gonna allow us to upload new files, new CSV file or any type of file that you want to upload to ChatGPT. In this case, I'm gonna upload this population underscore total, that CSV file, and we're gonna work with this file to do some data analysis. By the way, you can download this data set in the description below. Okay, I'm gonna click on open, and as you can see now, the CSV file is being uploaded. And now it's uploaded to ChatGPT, and what I'm gonna do is use this prompt. And this prompt says, act as a data scientist and analyze the data set and make charts and graphs to show the major trends in population growth around the world. So this data set is about population of different countries for many years. And in this case, I'm letting ChatGPT choose the charts and graphs for this analysis. So I'm gonna press enter and we'll see all the analysis that ChatGPT is gonna make on its own. All right, now let's see everything ChatGPT is gonna do with the code interpreter. First, it gives us a quick overview of the data set. As we can see here, uh, this is, these are the three columns that our data set has, and then it automatically detects that there are seven missing values. Here, we can also see that the code is being generated. So here, it's using pandas to read that CSV file, and then to spot these missing values is using the isNull method and then the drop NA function to drop these missing values. After that is doing some descriptive statistics to give us some insights about this data set. And finally is giving the visualization that we asked for. In this case, we didn't specify any type of visualization, but it generated a bar plot using matplotlib and then this line plot using matplotlib2. Okay, this is very cool. We didn't do so much prompting and we got all this analysis in some seconds. Now let's export all this report in a PDF. So I type this, answer it in the form of a multiple pages PDF download. And ChatGPT is going to provide a link for us to download all these analysis in a PDF format. All right, now I have the link. So I click on download the PDF. And after this, I'm gonna get a PDF file. I'm gonna download this PDF file. And if I click on it, you'll see that we have all the visualizations we asked for. So first the bar plot and then the line plot. So it's exactly what we got, but now in PDF format that you can analyze it without all the explanation that ChatGPT gave before. Now we can also export all the code generated in a Jupyter Notebook format. And we're gonna see how to do this in the next example. All right, for the next example, we're gonna do a lot of prompting to get a more customized report. So I'm gonna upload another data set. In this case, it's this players underscore 20 CSV, which is information about soccer players. Uh, in the game FIFA 20, and this data set has like 100 columns. So unlike the previous data set with three columns, now we're gonna work with a lot of data. And well, I'm gonna upload this CSV file, which is gonna also be in the description. And after do this, we're gonna type the following prompt. And here's the prompt. First, I'm telling ChatGPT to filter only some countries. So I want to analyze soccer players from some specific countries. And well, that's my first instruction. Then I'm asking to generate some visualizations. And the first is a bar plot. Then I want a histogram and a box plot then a scatter plot and then a pie chart. In each visualization, I'm giving some extra instructions of the variables that I want to analyze. Let's see if the code interpreter can handle all of this. Remember that is a lot of data. There are 
many columns and many rows, and we're giving some specific instructions to get a customized report. So first, um, it's giving an overview of this data set. It's telling us that it has 106 columns, but then it's going to select some columns and it's going to filter only the countries that I specified. So, so far, so good. Then we have our first visualization, which is this bar plot that was generated with this, uh, this code. Then it's generating the histogram and the box plot. And well, it looks great. So we have the histogram and the box plot that we asked for. Then it's generating also the, the scatter plot. And finally, it's generating the pie chart. And in case of the pie chart, it's using some weird colors. So what I'm going to ask is to change the colors of the pie chart. So I only ask this and as you can see, now I get different colors for different elements in this pie chart. Finally, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to add the link to download this report in PDF format. So now as you can see, I have the link and I have all the visualizations here in this PDF file. And the last visualization, the pie chart, is the pie chart with all the modifications that we asked for, so with the different colors. And that's how we get this PDF. Now we can also uh, download the code generated into IPYNB format, which is the format that is used for Jupyter Notebooks. All right, now I'm going to click on download the Jupyter Notebook. And if I open this file, we're going to see all the code that was exported into this IPYNB file. And now we can make some modifications to the code if we want to. But now let's put ChatGPT's code interpreter to the test with multiple files. So I'm going to upload multiple files, multiple data sets, and then we're going to make a data analysis based on those data sets. So I'm going to upload five data sets uh, from the FIFA game. In this case, players 17, players 18, 19, 20, and 21. So each data set represents the game in each year. So in the year 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And we're going to make a visualization using the five data sets. And as you can see, unfortunately, we cannot upload the five files in one shot, but we have to upload them separately. Now that all the files were uploaded, I'm going to use this prompt. So here I'm telling ChatGPT a little bit about these five data sets. Then I'm telling it to create a new column in each data set. And then I'm giving some instructions describing the type of analysis that I want to do. So in this case, I want to get a line plot with the evolution of the ratings, the FIFA ratings for this five players from the year 2017 to 2021. Then I press enter and it starts with the analysis. So it first tells me that the data was loaded for the players that I specified and then it's creating the line plot that I asked for. So now as you can see, first it had an issue, but then I, it found a solution for the overall column that is in this data set. And then we have our line plot. So we could verify that ChatGPT's code interpreter cannot only analyze one single data set, but also multiple data sets. And it generates all these reports with this visualization and we can export all this into a PDF file and we can also export that code to read it in Jupyter Notebooks. And that's very cool, but if you don't develop your analytical and coding skills, you won't be able to know what's, for example, a positive correlation or why you have to drop the seven missing values that were found in this data set. Remember that at the end of the day, as a data analyst or data scientist, you'll have to make some decisions based on different factors. And that's why you have to develop your analytical thinking. And a free and easy way to develop your analytical thinking and improve your coding skill is using Brilliant.org, which is the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. It has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced math to data science with new lessons added monthly. I love the data science course on Brilliant because it helps develop my analytical thinking and within a few quick lessons, you get to analyze real data and draw interesting conclusions from it. Also, with Brilliant, I can learn and review this and more topics through problem solving, which isn't about memorizing formulas or equations, but learning how to think. 
And this is very important when it comes to developing your analytical thinking. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the pie coach. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section if ChatGPT's code interpreter is going to make the life of data scientists and data analysts easier or if it's going to replace them. And that's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.